Hello, I'm Dr. Sonali Smith, and I'm currently the Interim Section Chief of Hematology and Oncology at the University of Chicago. Part of our mission is to take outstanding care of our patients with cancer, and during this current coronavirus pandemic, there are many questions and concerns you have specifically related to your diagnosis and the treatment for your diagnosis of cancer. One of the first questions is, what is coronavirus? What is COVID-19? And uh, how does that apply to me? So although you may have read quite a bit about this, just as a background, this new coronavirus, more properly called SARS-CoV-2, is a new coronavirus that is extremely contagious and can cause a very severe disease called COVID-19. My name is Dr. Neetha Lee, and I'm a GYN oncologist at University of Chicago. I'm here to help today answer some questions about how the coronavirus pandemic can affect um, cancer patients that we're caring for. What we do know from other countries is that patients who have cancer, or especially those under recent treatment, may have a higher risk of getting sicker with COVID-19. We're not sure if they're all at higher risk for getting it, but it's very important to think about in terms of any immunocompromise and how your immunity is. There are some patients with cancer, specifically with blood cancers, who have a higher risk because their immune systems have been weakened. Patients who have been through stem cell transplant, CAR-T therapy, or other treatments that are designed to knock down the immune system uh, do have an increased risk of complications related to the disease. However, in general, we caution all patients uh, to follow the guidelines in terms of frequent and prolonged hand washing and avoiding sick contacts as we don't feel the actual risk of getting the disease is higher, just the severity of the disease if it should happen. Right now, this is a very personalized plan. Each of the providers in all of the oncology, GYN oncology, radiation oncology, and surgery are really making decisions on a case-by-case -case basis. We are continuing with chemotherapy. We are looking at all of the patients to see what's going to be the most appropriate course. And most of all of our patients are getting personal calls from our nursing teams or the physicians themselves to help us make those decisions. We wanna do what's safest and best. At this time, the situation with clinical trials is changing nearly on a daily or weekly basis. For right now, the majority of our trials are still open for patients who have already been enrolled. However, we are cutting back on trials that do not uh, have a clear treatment component. So for example, if there are registry studies or clinical trials where there is extra tissue required or extra visits to the campus, those particular trials are being slowed down and hopefully will be available again down the road. However, if you are already consented to a clinical trial or part of a clinical trial, it's really important for you to communicate with your care team to know when you should or should not come to the medical center. Many potentially optional parts of the trial are being put on hold uh, for the safety of you and others around you. I think you can expect that we're here to sort of take care of you and to make sure that you're going to continue to do well. For patients who are doing well and are not on active treatment right now, we still care about how you're doing, but we want to also do what's safest and makes the most sense. This may mean if you're feeling well and without any specific new symptoms, we will likely postpone your visit and reschedule you or do a telemedicine visit and talk to you about all of these things. If you don't have any new symptoms, we, we really do feel that it's the safest thing for us to postpone visits and make sure that we touch base with you in a different way. This may help us reorganize when you get lab work, imaging, or exams as well. Well, patients who are on chemotherapy will obviously sometimes be in the process of getting their white blood cell counts tested to see if they're particularly immunocompromised, such as neutropenia, but there's not another specific test that we would do unless it was part of your treatment plan. Patients who are not on current treatment and are cancer survivors don't have any other specific testing that we would warrant them taking. While we always think that cancer screening for the cancers that we can screen for, colorectal, breast, and 
cervical are really important, this is actually a public health time where we do not recommend that usual screening gets done. So that means if you are not having any symptoms in those organs and you are just going for a screening mammogram, colonoscopy, or pap smear test, those are not recommended to be done at this time. And those you can reach, talk to your provider about when those would eventually be rescheduled. I think right now, if you have an appointment and you're due for a cancer screening, especially at University of Chicago, you're going to be called by the provider group or the care team to really reschedule your appointment. And we are keeping track of all of our patients that we are rescheduling and making sure they're aware of their care plan as well going forward, as, especially as all of this changes so quickly. So even though cancer patients may be at slightly higher risk, we do not think that there is any recommendation for COVID-19 testing in that circumstance unless patients have symptoms of the disease, which include fever, flu-like illness, cough, some GI symptoms, some cluster that makes it indicated. If you're not having any symptoms, there's no reason to leave your house or leave your, you know, where you are and come to get tested. It wouldn't be appropriate. If you are having symptoms, we recommend that you call your provider, let them know so they can best help you decide whether testing is appropriate and how to handle that situation. If you develop any symptoms of a respiratory infection, and this includes fever, headache, body aches, cough, or chills, uh, it's important for you to contact your healthcare provider and talk through these symptoms with them. If they are very severe, you should call 911. But in most cases, it's important to talk to your provider first who can direct you whether or not you need to be tested for COVID-19. If you need to be tested, you will be provided with a phone number along with uh, the the specific details on how to get tested. I think the main thing that we're asking our patients to do is what we're asking everyone to do, which all of us should be doing, which is social distancing. So making sure that you're avoiding sort of public spaces, group meetings or forums, even if that means um, things that you normally attend, such as church. There's a lot of different, um, different ways that um, you can stay not socially isolated, but really making sure that you're not close to people in your own home. Also just doing good hand washing if you have to go outside frequent hand washing, hygiene, using um, alcohol-based hand um, sanitizer as well. Those are really all important elements. I think that for patients with cancer, you may want to also make sure that you're up to date with having enough medications at home and talking to your provider and your pharmacist about making sure you have everything that you need. We are always going to be here and available and uh, you know, for our patients in terms of questions and concerns, but just making sure you have enough um, supplies in terms of those kinds of things would be important. And then just following along with any guidelines that come out from any of our public health officials. Thank you.